Oh, uh, so um, you religious at all? Um, not really, no. No. So, what what is your ideology? Um, uh, well, I believe that there's a God, but um, uh, I don't follow any religion. I mean, my family is uh, follow the Catholicism, but um, mm. uh, no, yeah, I don't. <laughs> so you believe there's a God? Why do you believe there's a God? I would like to believe there's a God because when I'm going through like a rough path, a batch, um, I don't know, I would like to believe that there's a higher force that can help me out. <laughs> what, a higher force that guides you? Yeah. That, well, that can help me out, yeah. <laughs> well, I w what I would say ultimately is that you seem like a decent person and I don't know, what's your name by the way? Jorge. Oh hey, nice name, good to see you. But what's your name by the way? Fabiana. Fabiana. You're Spanish? Right. Uh, we're no. from Costa Rica. Oh, sp Hispanic. Yes, Hispanic. Hispanic. <laughs> yeah. So you, you seem like a decent person. You seem like you're open to at least hearing the gospel. Of you know? So what, what we'll say is this, look. You yourself know there's a God, so you've already acknowledged that. Right? But what I would say is that this God, in the most open sense, is Jesus Christ. What I would say is that 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died for your sins and he rose again on the third day, but that, not just that. What I would say is that all reality, whether, whether it be science, whether it be mathematics, whether it be um, even other religions, point to an idea that there is goodness in life. There is goodness in reality. I would say the position you're in now, right, in terms of whether they're being a God or not, that, that gives you an idea of there being a God, but that doesn't give you an idea of why there are right and wrongs in the universe or any sort of structure because if I say I believe in a God but I don't know what that God is I don't know I've never communicated with it yeah. it, it could be anything it's just what my mind tells me that God is what I'm saying is the reason why there's goods or rights and wrongs in this, on, on this planet and how we, how we communicate with each other sorry is because ultimately the Christian God is yeah. foundationally the God of the universe yeah. right. I would say this look ultimately do you believe that there are good Rights and wrongs in the universe. For example, do you believe that? Use the most richest example. Do you believe rape is wrong? If I build what? Do you believe rape is wrong? To use the most harsh example. It's a sexual assault. Yeah, yeah. I know, yeah, but yeah. what about rape? Is, I'm sorry? So do you believe it's wrong? I believe it's wrong. Yeah, of course. Right. I believe it's wrong. What, what, because, what I would say is. Because, I mean. Go, go. The difference between right and wrong is like when you don't respect uh, the. A person freedom or limits or boundaries of a person exactly of another person let's, now let's say i'm an atheist right i'm, I'm going to take the role of atheist i'm going to say this year that well how can you convince me that it's wrong right surely right it, it may, may, may be wrong to you but why is it because you're not wrong to respecting other people's boundaries but why should i as an atheist respect other people's boundaries uh well because you're well that person will be a total psychopath or a sociopath. Um, maybe, maybe they would, but, but it won't be a normal person. I mean, it's not, not because he person, doesn't no. believe in God. It's because he's not right in his mental health. Yeah, but what? Why would that be wrong? Think about it, right? What yeah, is know, right in terms that of you mental? Take God as a base. Of to course, because what's, what's yeah. right or wrong. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that everybody should think that way. Even though I believe in God. I've been involved in uh, in the church the first years of my life, and I decided to step aside and um, and say I, I would to say, myself and yeah, my but morals. But I would say ultimately, sister, if you don't believe that there's a foundation for what's good or bad, then what you end up with is a subjective reality. Do you know what subjective means? Yes. So what you end up is with is well. Whoever, whoever decides on the day that it's right or wrong, it's right or wrong. Whatever society decides it's right or wrong, it's right or wrong. For example, in Saudi Arabia, there is no age con limit for consent. But in this country, there is. Yeah. Now, you may think that's wrong. You may think, well, what are you doing in Saudi Arabia? At least some, somebody there could be like, well, having sex with a child is wrong. Yeah. We, could, we shouldn't be able to marry a child. But in Saudi Arabia, you can. Yeah. You would say that was wrong. But Saudi Arabia could say to you, well, no, I think it's right. Who are you to tell me that it's wrong? Yeah. What, what answer would you give to Saudi Arabia? Uh, again, that's what I think. I mean, what, what is wrong or right is when you don't respect other people and their boundaries. Um, but um, I understand what you're saying. And I, and I agree with the fact that in our current, like in nowadays, 
uh, we take what the religion told us that is wrong or right. I do believe that, uh, and I respect that, and I follow that, but I don't think that everybody should take God as their foundation to decide what, what is wrong I would right. say ultimately. Even, though, even if I yeah. do it. Well, but I, I would say ultimately, if you do not, then what you have is a subjective reality. And as I explained to you before, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I understand. What you have is, like, I, with the analogy, forget the analogy aside for Saudi Arabia. In every situation where you claim something's bad or good, you can't say to the other person that their actions are wrong. Yeah, I know that. What, the, what we do in the Christian paradigm is with the Christian God, there are right or wrongs. There are laws that all men should follow. Yeah. Yeah. There are things that are just and unjust within the Christian paradigm. But without the Christian paradigm, you don't have that. Yeah. You're, you, it's only your idea of what is right or wrong. Yeah. And who are you? Are you the law yourself to claim what's yeah, right or wrong or kind of, somebody it's else? It's kind of hard because, for example, I'll give you an example. When I was a teenager, I used to go to a Christian uh, church. Mm. And, for example, for they, something that was wrong, it was not wrong for me. As uh, going to parties, uh, go out, mm. listen to pop music, let's say. And stuff like that. Having a boyfriend, um, having sex before marriage. That was wrong for them. Mm. But what happened if it's not wrong for me? Should I follow that because it's what they believe? I don't think so. We should also be for for his right. For example, with the idea of sex outside of marriage, for example, just to take a bit of what you said and choose against yeah. Basically, in terms of sex before marriage, the reason why God has instituted those laws is not to to trap people or to contain them in a box, but ultimately is to ensure that human beings have right relationship and right contact. Yes. Yeah? Jesus Christ calls himself a physician. A physician is a doctor, somebody who helps. He has determined that the human condition is in, this, in an awful state. And one of the things we see consistently with society, and you can look up statistics yourself, you don't have to believe anything I have to say, but single parent mothers normally end up either with children that end up in prison or children that end up in poverty. Because what has to happen is that in every situation, there has to be a mother and a father figure. Yeah. This can only be done in the sanctity of marriage where you're under the laws of God and you are bound by the fact that you as a mother or father are to look after this offspring. Well, outside I, of... I, allow, I, allow, I, can, I, can I just finish my point? Yes, then? please. So please out, outside... It's, no problem. <laughs> outside of this, right, <laughs> what you have is what you have to let secular society doing today. Having endless amounts of sex. But the problem is we have STDs. We have various single parent mothers. We have children growing up in single parent households without father figures. Yeah. I myself come from a single parent mother household. Yeah, I mean, so I'm not here to judge. But what I'm saying is it always, most of the time, even though I'm an exception, obviously most of the time, it ends up bad for the for the children and it ends up bad for those involved in the situation. Yeah, I understand. So, like so example, Christ is telling us, look, the, the, the only way to solve this is to be in a marriage. Mm -hmm. Even if you love somebody, but if you love somebody so much, why shouldn't you want to spend the rest of your life? That's the question I'd ask you. Well, um, for the person that I am right now, I would like to spend the rest of my life with. Him. But <laughs> then, what's wrong with the sanctity of marriage? Then there's nothing wrong. I would like to get married. Exactly. Well, that's my point. You've just proved my point. But your your earlier qualm was that basically, look, like God has, God has me, said, you can't have a boyfriend. Before marriage, it's not a sin. It's not something wrong. But that doesn't mean that I don't believe in marriage and that... that well, as, as I was explaining before, marriage. the reason why sex before marriage is wrong is ultimately because... Let's say you have sex before marriage, right? You, you, you see you have a man, you have a child, right? But that man ill-treats you after, the, after the, like, well, let's say a couple of weeks, right? Or he decides to leave you altogether. You can't say, no, you are bound by the laws of God to stay with me and to provide for my child. No. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, and well, then you're left in a situation where you have a child yeah. you don't want in a situation you don't need to be in. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. As you, I come from... A, well, my parents were married when I was born. When what? I was like two years old, they got divorced. And I do believe that that was the best decision that my mom could take what? because I had a really, really happy childhood. Mm. Um, however... Um, and, and that wasn't the same of marriage, and it still didn't work out. Um, and uh, yeah, why she will she will stay marriage in the marriage that didn't work out? I, I don't know. I, I just God's not promising that a marriage will work out. But what God's essentially saying is, look, 
it, within the sanctity of marriage is the most paramount, most responsible nature of a human, human being. So when you love somebody, you, you consider that person worthy of sharing your time with. And then when you have a child with that person, then both parents become responsible for not only looking after that child, but looking after the household they grow up in, so that they don't, they don't turn out in poverty or in homelessness or whatever. They yeah, always have well, something to do. My point is, I totally agree with you. I would like to get married and I would like to have kids in my marriage, but I don't think that everybody should think in the same way as I do. And, and that's the problem I'd have with you, sister. What I would suggest is this, right? Just to not belabor the point, right? When, when we look at like moral structures, when we look, even look about what you said, you, you said, oh, I don't think that should be the case for everybody. But what, what, what I would tell you this, sister, is without the Christian paradigm, ultimately is you have the world we have today. A world full of broken people who are fallen, who, who are going around, having sex with them, whoever they want, and not single parent mothers, and a bunch of people on universal credit or welfare or whatever situation we are, I'm not to judge. But what we, what we essentially have is the world we have today. The world could be so much better within the Christian paradigm. So whilst you may not be, you may not think it may be wrong for somebody else to do that, what I'm saying is that God, well the Christian God, has suggested that this in itself is intrinsically wrong and he, he's calling you to a better life, a better way of thinking. Yeah. One that's outside of the way of thinking of, well, anybody can do what they want because ultimately, if you push that as far as you can, sister, mm -hmm. you, you believe yourself that not everybody can do whatever they want. If a man came to your house with a gun and said, look, to your mother, God forbid, God forbid, she would ever be harmed. But why, if you said that to your mother, pull your trousers down, let me do whatever I want to, using the most graphic term, right? You would disallow it, you would think that was unjust. But what we're saying is only under the Christian paradigm can you claim that's unjust. In, in, in the situation you are right now, you can't claim it's unjust. You can, well, you can make the claim, but it'll be as stupid as me saying that the pigs can fly. It'll be unnecessary. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah, I do. No, and thank you so much for your point of view. Yeah, we wanted to, to anyway, um, that marriage was actually instituted by God. It's not something that came from the society. And also, uh, millions of babies are aborted every year. And it is, uh, I would say, mainly because of sex before marriage. Mm. But nevertheless, the Bible says that when sin increases, mercy abounds a lot more. So. You know, God is forgiven, you know, like many people become Christian when they were not Christian before and they broke all the commandments many times, but um, no matter who you are, God can give you a new life and he can forgive you and he can make you a new creation and so, um, and he, he's not going to judge you. I think the thing is, uh, we have to turn to God before it's too late because the Bible says when death comes, judgment is set. Um, but we wanna, I want to leave this with you okay. as we are in season. Okay. It's Thank about you so much. Uh, Christmas. Thank you. Thank you so much. This time, Jesus loves the band life. He's just waiting for you to come to his band life. He's, yeah. He's there waiting for you. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I hope you really like ponder on what I was saying. And, like, yes, I do. Yeah. And I'm, not, I'm not here to judge you or whatever. No, it's I just. Know. And I would like to. Yeah. I, 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 like, I, really like, I really enjoy to listen to other new points yeah. of you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. What, what did you think about? Uh, I thought she was pretty open-minded. Yes. Again, another beautiful woman, open-minded. Um, yeah. She's uh, she, uh, she's agnostic, as are so many people. Yeah. Unfortunately, with agnosticism, it obviously leads to the position where you don't, you can't say that there's objective rights or wrongs on the planet. You can't really claim that they're right or wrong. But if, to then say that, oh, well, religion is stupid. We shouldn't follow religion. And it's fairy tales. Well, hold on. You believing that there's rights or wrongs on the planet is a fairy tale within itself. Mm. You can't show that there's a right or wrong using agnosticism or atheism or I any of these presuppositions. But yeah, I think yeah. what is highlighted to me, though, just like with the other lady we spoke to before, is how um, is how basically, you know, if you have children, it's not enough to take them to church on a Sunday because people, you know. You need it's a full-time commitment because yeah. otherwise, if you don't make it a full-time commitment, when children grow up, they will just leave the faith because they don't take it seriously. Exactly, and children need both parents. That's what I told, told her because yeah. the reason why God instituted marriage, obviously, because if you read if you read what Jesus said about marriage, he said in the beginning they were male and female, Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. So Adam and Eve were male and female, and it was instituted so that they themselves. Yeah, one yeah. day became one flesh, as Michael said. Yeah. yeah. So like, by doing that, he institutes this covenantal si situation yeah. where they come into a situation where 
they, they bond and when they pair bond they obviously spread that love to somebody else yeah. if we don't have that what we have is, is, is a continuation of partners sleeping around I, and then aborting children as um, Amy pointed out yeah. and that's a problem the amount of children being aborted just simply because people decide you know what I don't want this child even though I'm the one that slept around to get it uh, and uh, yeah. yeah and also uh, and also the other thing I was gonna say is that in the Bible it tells you how every time you have sex with somebody you become one flesh mm. so there is that spiritual baggage that you carry with you yeah that's actually called pair bonding so there's actually this psychological yeah. in psychology actually if you do the, if you look up the studies yourself right there's something called pair bonding that that means that anybody like when a woman sits around when a man sits around they essentially bond with their partner. They take on the traits, they take on their, their even their psychological traits sometimes. Uh -huh. And that, if you continuously do that, what happens is you get so used to that, that when you do eventually find a partner, what happens is you don't give that partner enough time. You don't, like, you, you don't value that partner enough because uh -huh. why should you? You've had so much partners, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but nevertheless, yeah. you know, God forgives and even if, you had 10,000 partners and you prostituted yourself. Yeah, and a, yeah and God forgives, that's, that's the God difference. can wipe your slate clean and give you a fresh start. God so. is still forgiving me. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I'm not going to get Cain to be perfect. God is still forgiving yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we told that, but we remind the audience where sin increases, mercy abounds even more so. Yes. But anyway, God bless.